Hola pessoal, welcome to Kingdom Influencer. I pray that you guys are doing well. I've been trying to figure out a way for me, you know, to plan um the execution of this message, plan how I should say it, but it's been really difficult and really hard and I can't say why. But um I want to start off by saying that a few years ago probably the beginning of when God started speaking to me about kinder marriage a year after or in that same year um a friend of mine and myself were giving my cousin some advice and as I read the scripture it reminded me of the advice that my cousin and I, my best friend cousin, I call her cousin, I call her family, um, that we gave to another cousin of mine. And as I read the scripture, not only did it remind me of that, but it also reminded me of a word that I had received that I've been trying to figure out from God why I received that word, what did it really mean, and I had a friend of mine that, you know, kind of spoke what I had thought concerning that word. She spoke to me about it. So let me start off by reading the scripture. In John 21, starting from verse 15, it says, After they had breakfast, Jesus said to Peter, Simon, son of John, do you burn with love for me more than these? Peter answered, Yes, Lord, you know that I have great affection for you. Then take care of my lambs, said Jesus. Jesus repeated the question a second time. Simon, son of John, do you burn with love for me? Peter answered, Yes, my Lord, you know that I have great affection for you. Then take care of my sheep, Jesus said. Then Jesus asked again, Peter, son of John, do you have great affection for me? Peter was saddened by being asked the third time and said, My Lord, you know everything. You know that I burn with love for you. Then Jesus replied, Then feed my lambs. Peter, listen. When let me stop there. Let me stop there. Let me stop there. Let me stop there. So we see that in the beginning, the first two questions when Jesus asked Peter, Peter, do you love me? Um, Pete, uh, Jesus was asking Peter if um, the word that Jesus used for love was agape love, was the love that spoke of action and unconditional love a love with no limits. And Peter replied with the love of affection, a love that is limited, a love that is conditional, a brotherly love. Um, I believe it's called phileo love, or just phileo. And we saw that the first two times Jesus spoke of an unconditional love, and Peter responded with a conditional love. And then the third time, Jesus was like, will you give me that love that is conditional, that love that is, um, that speaks of affection? And when he answered, he answered, and he spoke of the agape love. His answer included a love that was un conditional, a love that had no limits, had no barriers. And it reminded me of the talk, the advice that um, I and my friend had given our cousin because a few years ago, the advice that we had given her, she was talking to us about um, her boyfriend and not being sure if she wanted to carry on with him, you know, and 
we looked at her age and we thought of ourselves when we were her age and we had come to the conclusion that at that age that's when you know we had our first love and just you know speaking playful but still serious and not realizing that we were actually being prophetic we were actually just like you know what the first love is like you know that puppy love it's that high school love it's that love where you fall in love for the first time and you grow you are still finding yourself you um are realizing what you like what you don't like you know you are growing into the woman that you were supposed to be and then after that you know you break up and then there is the second time that you fall in love and we were like to her the second time it is this is tough we were like you know that's when you realize that there is more to love that's when um you start really um seeing the challenges and you date someone that challenges you um you guys make up get back together you guys um we were just just thinking of that conversation we were actually just you know speaking <laughs> about what we had personally gone through our second time that we had fallen in love and then we said but then there is the third time and that third time it's the time where you stay you know it's that relationship it's that partner that you get married to that you get engaged to you know what you want you know what you can put up with you already know what are your faults you know what are the good things about yourself and you know um you just know quite a lot and funny enough my my cousin my best friend that was sharing this advice that her and I were being the counselor she was in this third type of love right she was in this third type of love and for a week or two weeks i kept bumping into i kept bumping into something i kept bumping into something and it says i just want to read to you guys what it says so that i can go into what god is really saying just bear with me just bear with me just bear with me just bear with me so what i kept bumping into it says we fall in love with three people in our lifetime and each of them for a specific reason so the first love is the love that only ha- that often happens at a young age so it's the love that often happens at an, a young age you eventually grow apart or call it quits over silly things when you get older you may look back and think that wasn't love but the truth is it was it was love for what you knew love to be remember there are different depths of love and then the second love the hard one you get hurt in this one this love teaches you lesson and it makes you stronger this love includes great pain lies betrayal abuse drama and damage but this is the one where we grow we realize what we love about love and what we don't love about love now we know the difference between good human and bad human now we become closed careful cautious and considerate we know exactly what we want and what we don't want and then there is the third love this one comes blindly no warning it creeps it creeps um on you silently you don't go looking for this love it comes to you you can put up any walls you want and it will be broken you'll find yourself caring caring for that person without trying they will look nothing like your usual type but you get lost in their eyes daily you see beauty in their imperfections you hide nothing from them you want to marry them and have a family with them and you thank god for them you truly love them at a time where i was asking god about a particular word a particular prophecy 
that I had gotten, he kept bringing this to me. He kept bringing this to me. And a friend of mine came to me and she was like, Jess, God is talking to me about the third time, the third time. Excuse me, the third time being that lucky charm. And I said to her, sis, it's funny that you're saying this because this is what the Lord has been having me read. Like this thing has been bumping into me wherever I go. And when I read the scripture, because I said to God, God, I want you to confirm this word. And when I read the scripture, that's exactly what God was confirming to me. Jesus spoke to Peter and he spoke of the agape love. The first time, you know, we fall in love, we feel, we believe that this is the love that you know that is going to be forever. When I fell in love with the first time with a guy that I dated for almost seven, eight years, I thought I was going to marry him. I thought that he was going to be the one. I was determined to do whatever I had to do in my power to be with him. And after that, you know, I saw that agape wasn't there, that agape wasn't meant for us, that Agape wasn't meant for that situation. When I say for us, him and I together. Agape wasn't meant to be manifest through him and I. So it was a different kind of love, right? Just like how Peter answered. Just like how Peter answered. Jesus spoke of the agape. Peter answered in a different way. We go into these relationships believing it's agape, but then we see there is no agape. We see that it's a different type of love, right? The second time, Jesus asks that again. Jesus speaks of the agape love. Peter returns and answers with the filial love, the affectionate love, right? And again, the second time you fall in love. The second time you fall in love, you feel that it is going to be better and it possibly can be better. But like just like what I read, it is challenging. There is heartache. There is betrayal. There is some damage. You start seeing things for what they really are. And you look at that and you see that that was not agape. Agape was not meant to manifest in that situation where agape was not meant to manifest through both of you guys that that wasn't what god had called it for it to manifest it wasn't with that person even though it could have been better even though the connection the depth of that love was different it seemed better it seemed that it carried more weight but it was still not agape And then Jesus finally looks at Peter and he speaks of the filial love. He speaks of the affectionate love. And Peter answers with the agape love. He says the burning love. The Passion Translation speaks of the burning love. Because Jesus kept asking him, do you have the burning love for me? And Peter answered and he says, no, I have the affectionate. God, you know, I have the affectionate love. God, you know, I have the affectionate love. And the third time God is like, okay, Jesus is like, okay, do you have this affectionate love for me? And he's like, Lord, you know what? You're asking me a third time. You are reminding me of how I neglected you. Sometimes when God speaks to you about your kingdom spouse, when God speaks to you about I'm trying not to get emotional and I'm not understanding why I'm getting emotional. When God speaks to you about your spouse, the marriage, the promise of marriage that he has for you. When God um, brings that up, you can't help but think how you have messed up. You can't help but think how you have been in certain relationships that, you know, didn't glorify him, certain relationships that really hurt you, certain relationships that made you feel damaged, that made you feel unappreciated, certain relationships that just remind you of your failure, right? Of maybe how you failed, of maybe how 
you disappointed God, how you weren't obedient to him when he said left, when he said don't get involved in that relationship. And Peter being sad and being uh, upset, you know, I when I was receiving this, it was as if almost like we know that God, we know that Jesus is all knowing, we know that he knows what we're going to say. But it was as if Jesus was caught by surprise. I know that there is no way that we can catch our Savior by surprise. But it was like Jesus was caught by surprise because he kept speaking of this love to Peter. And Peter kept answering with a different love. Peter kept mentioning something different. Just like how God says to you, I have this for you. I have a love like this for you. I have a spouse like this for you. And we fail along the way. You know, we go and we bring someone to God that isn't who God wants for us. We we try and make people to be, to become um, what God has personally spoke to us, knowing that they are not the one. And when Jesus was like, okay, cool, you keep, bringing this love up you keep bringing this up okay let me use the term that you were using to me let me not force anything on you and let me take your will let me take your desire and let me give you what you want and Peter was like no Lord you know all things you know that I have this burning love for you Jesus kept speaking of a love to Peter that made no sense to him, of a love that he did not know, of a love that could have possibly taken time for him to fully grasp, for him to fully understand. But it got to a point where that love that Jesus wanted Peter to know, where Jesus wanted Peter to experience so much, that love rose up and Peter and Peter responded saying that that is the love that he had for the father that he had for our savior the savior spoke of a love that he wants us to have for him because he has that love for us and sometimes we confuse the love that we are supposed to have the love that God has for us, the love that is available to us. We confuse that love and we think it's a different type of love when God is like, no, this is the love that I want you to have. This is the love that I want you to experience. It's unconditional. You don't have to do anything to deserve it. Just you being who you are, this love is freely given to you. And I don't only want you to experience this love through me. I want you to experience this love through the person that I have for you through the person that I have chosen for you. There is a specific way that you are meant to be loved. There is a specific way that you deserve to be loved. And sometimes it is so hard for us to accept this love because of what we have done, what we have gone through, because of that second relationship, that second love, because of the things that we have experienced in certain relationships that when it comes to the third time, we've got walls up, we've got cages up, we've got the wall of Jericho up. But when we keep allowing God to work in us, when we keep allowing God to have his will, when we don't stand in the way of God and truly just allow him to do what it is that he has to do. When we finally get to a point where we say, God, I actually know nothing. God, I have gotten in your way for way too long. Now I just need you to do what it is that you have to do. I just need you to work in the way that you have to work. I just need you to bring to me the person that you have for me to bring to me Um, the love, the marriage that you have for me without me fiddling, without me meddling with it, without me getting in the way, Lord, I just want you to do that. And when God does it, it comes in a way that it catches us by surprise. It catches us by surprise. And even though 
the enemy comes with lies, even though the enemy comes with memories, even though the enemy tries to condemn us, even though the enemy tries to keep us trapped with the thoughts, with the reminders of things of our past. This love, it breaks down those walls. This love, it erases all these memories. This love makes the unqualified feel qualified. This love makes the undeserving feel deserving. This is the love that God wants us to have. This is the love that God wants you to expect. Could it be with the third person that you fall in love? Could it be with the fifth person that you fall in love? Could it be with the hundredth person that you fall in love? The love that God is speaking about is the love that comes directly from him. It's the love that he has put in the specific human being, in your spouse. That your spouse has to pour out to you. That your spouse has to give you. This is a love that God has given specifically to your spouse. Because this is the love that is going to remind you of who God is. It's going to remind you of how much God loved you. That he gave you someone that is able to love you unconditionally, that there is nothing that you could possibly do that would make this person turn away from you, that there is nothing in your past that can make this person run away from you. Sometimes we struggle with things that we have done in our past. Sometimes we struggle with things that we did out of disobedience, thinking that we knew better, thinking that we were in control. And when we fall and we hit our face flat on the ground, we get back up. But when we get back up, you know, there we are with that worry. There we are with that, oh my gosh. (coughs) Excuse me. There we are with God, but I did that. God Will that person accept me? Will that person disqualify me? Will that person think that I am less of a woman or a man of God? Because I've done A, B, C, and D. We all have a past. But at the same time, we know that not everyone is accepting of our past. Not everyone is accepting of the things that we've done. But the third love, the agape love, this love does not look to that. This love covers a multitude of sin. This love erases all these memories. This love is there to love you unconditionally. This love is there to build new memories with you. This love is there to remind you that the promise that God has for you will come to pass. This love is a love that God has set aside for you. That when you are trusting God for any other thing in your life, you will look at your spouse, you will look at your family, you will look at your, your, fa- your marriage and you will say, I saw how God came through for this. And there is no doubt that there is nothing that God will not come through for me. There is nothing too difficult. There is nothing too hard. This love that God has set aside, this love that God has made for you and your spouse this love that God has put aside for you that it's reserved for you this love that's reserved for you is a love that will be a constant reminder of what God can do and of what he has done it will be a constant reminder of when you face trials, when you face challenges, when you face tribulation, you will know that if God did this, then there is nothing really that is too hard for him. There is nothing really that is impossible for him. That third love. And this third love is the third love that God wants for all of us. This third love is the third love that God wants you to experience in your marriage. Do not settle for the first love. Do not settle for the second love. Don't settle for a love that is just 
emotions, for love, that you have to do things for this person to want you, for this person to desire you, for this person to stick around. Don't don't settle for a love that it's just chemistry, just chemistry. For a love that is just based on looks. Accept the love and be willing to accept and take the love that is unconditional. A love that you don't have to do anything. A love that you don't have to prove your worth. A love that you don't have to prove your value. God wants you now to have this agape love. And like the word that my friend had given me, that a third time, the third time might be the luck, the, the third time might be the lucky charm. I think that's how you say it. Maybe that is specifically for you. That the third time around that you fall in love, that that's the time or that's the person that God has for you. That the third time that you give it a try, that that's the time, that that's the time that God has set for you and this person to come together. The third time around will be that lucky charm thingy, my Bob. <laughs> the third time around will be the right time. The third time you fall in love. No matter what the number three represents to you, no matter what the third is, is it a third month? Is it a third year? Is it a third person? What is God saying to you concerning the three? What is the three for you? What is God ministering to you concerning the three? I know that there are people where God has been highlighting the three a lot. There are people where God has been speaking about the number three. What is that three for you? How is that three looking to you? And I believe it's prophetic. I believe it comes straight from God. Because Peter was asked this question three times. And at the very last time, his answer was different. At the very last time, there was a change. The third time brought change. The third time brought revelation. The third time brought around the real type of love, the true type of love. It is in the third time where the promise came to pass. It is in the third time where God gave him the revelation of how much Peter would truly love Jesus. That he would be willing to die in the beginning when he denied Jesus, when he denied our Savior. It was because he was not ready to face death. And it was the third time when he answered, when he spoke of the agape love, where the prophecy, where the revelation was given to Peter, where God said to him, Peter, you know what? You are going to be given a second opportunity to look death in the face and not shy away from me, not shy away from who I am, not shy away from what I have done. You will speak boldly. You will not deny me. You will stretch out your hands and die, stretching out his hands the same way that Jesus' hands were stretched on that cross. And Peter took it further and he even said, you know what, put me upside down because I am not worthy of dying the same way that my Savior, that my Master died. He understood that love. His love for Jesus was taken on a whole new other level. He was willing to die for our Savior. Just like how God has called the husbands to die for their wives. These other loves that 
we have experienced, these love that maybe we think is the love that we want, the love that we keep asking God to put on a specific person, they don't have that love. They don't have the love that they are willing to lay down their lives for you. They don't have that love that they are willing to, that they are willing and that they have the revelation of dying to self for someone else, dying to their wants, dying to their desire. Peter at first had the desire to die for Jesus. He had the desire, you know, to defend Jesus. But that desire was not enough. That desire was not enough when he was faced with death, when he was faced with what he feared. And these are the types of love that we have had in the past where they tell you what they desire, where they tell you how much they want to be with you, where they tell you, I want you to be my children's parent. I want this and this and this. I want this and this and this. But when things got hard, they were not willing to die to themselves. When things got hard, their flesh spoke louder. That desire drowned. That desire was just overtaken by what they feared the most. They still wanted their selves to live. They still wanted their wants to live. They weren't willing to lay down their lives for you. But God is saying, don't despair. Don't lose hope. Don't try and force something to be what I have promised you. What I have promised you does not have to be forced. What I have promised you, you don't have to twist anyone's hand for you to get it. What I have promised you will come to you. What I have promised you, it does not need your hand to make it, to fix it. What I have promised you, it will come. Not only will they have the desire, but they will go through with their words. They will go through with what they have said. They will have the understanding of this marriage. They will have an understanding of the love that you both have to share. They will have an understanding of their role in this relationship, in this marriage. So don't despair at what didn't work. Don't despair that the first love didn't work out. If you have had three first loves, it's okay. If you have had four second loves, it's okay. The third love is coming. The third love is on its way. The third love is for you. The third love is what God has always wanted to give you. The third love is what God has always had in store for you. And there there is absolutely nothing Nothing, nothing, nothing that can keep this love away except for you not wanting it. Except for you not wanting it. I believe that when Peter was saddened that Jesus had asked this question three times and it reminding him of the three times that he had denied Jesus, he had to come face to face with what he had done. He was reminded of what he had done. He had to admit his fall. He had to admit his shortcoming. He had to come to God. He had to come to Jesus and repent. He had to come to Jesus and and just say, Lord, I failed. I know that I said this. I know that I said that. I even took out the sword trying to defend you. I even went after you. But I failed, God. I failed. I thought I heard you. I thought you said this person was the one. I did this. I did that. But it wasn't that person. It was my emotion. It wasn't you. It was my emotion that spoke so loud. Or this person brought something 
that soothed my pain. This person brought something that I myself connected to what they brought. I connected what they said to what you had promised and I didn't seek you or I ignored your signs. He had to come face to face with what he did and how he failed. And that's what, (coughs) excuse me, and that's what some of us just have to do. We have to come and ask our Lord for forgiveness. We have to come and ask God for forgiveness. Ask him to forgive us and move past it. Admit it and move past it. Because he has something greater. He has something better for us. And we need to be willing to accept it. We need to be willing to accept it. And I just want to say to my fellow sisters in Christ, I want my prayer, my heart, heart's desire is for you to have a man for you to accept this man that God has brought to you that will love you the way that you deserve to be loved maybe I am sensitive and I am more compassionate when it comes to my fellow sisters because I know the capacity that we have of loving someone. I know that when we love, we can really love. And sometimes it's painful, it hurts to be able to love to that extent and not receive it. Not that we are expecting it. There is a difference about expecting a certain type of love and you just knowing that You were falling short of that love. Not expecting a certain love is not expecting to be loved the way that you want to be loved. The way that you think you need to be loved. But there are situations where you are loving on someone. You are really pouring out yourself to someone And this person really just doesn't give two hoots about it. And because I know how, as as women, how we are capable of loving, my prayer is that you accept the love that God has set aside for you, that you accept the love that God has reserved for you and that this love finds you, that this love is poured out on you because I truly believe that you deserve to be loved the right way. You deserve to be loved with no limitations. You deserve to be loved in an unconditional way. Because you deserve it. I'm picking up on things that people have gone through. I am feeling emotions that people are feeling. And you deserve to be loved. You deserve to be loved. You deserve to be loved. Your heart has been broken so many times that there is this one person that is dying to pour out this love to you, to share this love to you, to mend your heart through God. There is this love that God has set aside for you that I want this love to locate you. I pray that this I pray that this love finds you. I pray that this love locates you. I pray that this love comes to you with no delay because you deserve it. You deserve it not because (coughs) I am saying so. 
you deserve it because it's what God says. It what it's what God has for you. So know that the third love is coming to you. The third love is coming to you. The third love is coming to you. And at times, for some people, you haven't experienced it because you are still hung up on the first love. You are still hung up on the third love. I'm not even speaking of a person, but I'm speaking of love in itself. You are hung up on the love that you are getting from someone that isn't an agape love. And you hanging on to this person, you trying to force God's hand on this person, it is blocking the agape love. You need to release all of these loves. You need to release all of these people. You need to just give it up to God. I know there were times where I was so hung up on certain people that when I would miss them, I would say, Lord, let them SMS, let them call me, let them show up, let them do something. And after some time, my prayer was, Lord, I'm missing them, but don't allow them to contact me. Don't allow them to call me. Like, just do what it is that you have to do to keep me away from this person. And that's what some people need to do. That's what some people truly need to do. I'm going to just get out of here because I feel like now I am, I feel like I'm talking a bit too much. I feel like I'm talking a bit too much, but I don't want to get in the way of the Holy Spirit. Maybe I'm feeling that way because, <laughs> yeah, I'm becoming transparent, I'm becoming vulnerable. But I just want God to do what it is that he has to do, Father. Just do what it is that you have to do. So don't hang on to a love that isn't the love that God has for you. God wants you to have that third love. God wants you to have the third love. It's the third love that God wants for you. The third person that's going to walk into your life. The third person that you are going to have a romantic relationship with. The third month, the third year, the third time, the third place. It's just the third. The number three. And it will be the right one. It will be the perfect agape for you. It will be the perfect agape. Can it get any better than agape? And God's saying the perfect agape. It will be the third love. It will be the third love. So, guys, just don't stand in the way of what God is doing. There are people that God wants to take from your midst. There are people that you have held on to that God wants you to release. God wants you to release. God wants you to give certain people into his hands and really allow God to have his way. Trust God. Trust God. If you fully trust God, you trust him with everything and everyone. And if it means God taking someone away, that's okay. Because you trust him and you know that he has the best for you. Just trust God. Trust God. So I am going to leave now. (coughs) 
Um beijo, pessoal. Stay blessed. Bye-bye.